Hey, it's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today we're going to talk about Observeware. Now, I've covered a few of these in the past. Stacer was one of the last ones that I covered and a lot of you guys were excited about it, but it was looking a little bit old and a little bit stale. Like they hadn't done a lot of work on it in a while, but it's still a really cool open source application. So if you haven't seen it or you haven't looked at it in a while, you might go check it out because it's still really great. But I wanted to find some other options that were a little bit more new and a little bit more up to date. So I happened to come across this one when I was just looking for some, some different things and it's really a nice little uh, application. So Observeware is awesome. Um, it's got different tabs to show you different things and we'll go through all this in just a minute in much more detail, don't worry. So you can see here what my CPU is doing, the RAM, my swap area, disks and network and all kinds of really great information here on this little window. It's really, really awesome and it's got some tabs with some different information that we'll cover. I want to cover one other one called Resources, which is another really nice little application. Um, and then we'll go through the install for this one as well. Um, on Observeware, the install is a little bit odd. Now in Fedora, it showed up for me in the software center. but if you're not running Fedora and it doesn't show up in your software center, you can still get it. You just have to go through kind of a Py install, a Python, which is pip, uh, pip3 installation process. And he's got the details down here of how to do that. You basically make sure Python 3 and pip3 are installed. And then you've got your virtual environment you'll create. You'll go into a certain uh, folder there. And then you're just going to go, or you're going to source this folder, sorry. Then you're going to do pip3 install Observeware. And then you'll, you'll just hit deactivate if you want to see it. But really simple, uh, really easy to, to kind of get going. Really straightforward again for me and Fedora. It just came through the uh, Software Center, which was awesome. Uh, resources is also available in the Fedora Software Center. Or if your Software Center has flat packs, um, you can get it because this is on FlatHub, so it's easy to get and actually use. But here's the project as well, so you can kind of check out what's been going on. And this is two months, you know, a couple months, you know, not, not too long ago. So this has got some active uh, stuff going on and, and they're making it better and better. So I want to go through and actually install that one as well. Um, and I'm just going to do it through the software center because it's so easy. But if you need to go and actually get it off of FlatHub, you just come over here, make sure you have Flatpak enabled and you just copy this right here and you're just going to paste that into your terminal and it's going to install. Um, in fact, here, let me just show you in the software center first uh resources we'll just pull that up so you can see it's right here and you just go here and click on install and it's going to install um, it's going to reload real quick because it's actually getting some updates and stuff like that but once it comes up there you just click on install and it's going to install and you'll have you'll have it ready to run it's got a dark and a light theme and i think it just follows your chosen theme for your desktop um, if you don't set it specifically if you just want to use this version this way you can so you, again you just go here and click on that copy button open up your terminal emulator and we'll just make that a little bit bigger font for you guys on the mobile devices and then we'll put that guy full screen here and then we're just going to paste that command in it's going to ask you are you sure you want to do this yes we'll just let it get all the stuff it needs and you can see there that it goes and grabs everything that it needs from FlatHub. and this does exactly the same thing on the software center except it does it in the background so it's now installed we're done with that part I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really truly enjoy it and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel. Plus, you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like. Just click on that thumbs up and that way YouTube knows that you like it and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. Um, so we've got this one running, which is really great. And you can see some really cool information here. So I want to kind of go through this one first. So we're going to talk about Observeware first, and then we'll talk about resources and you can kind of compare and contrast. But these are really nice system monitoring tools. Now they're system monitoring for your local system. They're not something that's giving you like a server that you attach to on another system or anything. If you want that, I, I highly, highly recommend you go out and check out some of the other options that I've talked about. You've got Zabbix if you're like trying to monitor a lot of stuff. CheckMK is an awesome one. It's open source as well. Um, Nagios is open source. Um, setting it up is a little bit more complicated in my opinion. There's some kind of pre-built application services or um, application solutions out there built on Nagios that are probably a little better, which CheckMK is one of those as a matter of fact. Um, but there's, there's lots of different options out there for you. But yeah, these kind of things are great, but these, these are really local on your local system type uh, system monitoring tools that I think are pretty awesome. So when we start with Observeware, 
First thing you've got out of the gate is kind of your overall dashboard. You can see how much of your CPU is being used, you can see how much of your memory is being used, and of course how much swap if you have swap set up. As you drop below these little graphs, you can actually see some of the details that give you the breakdown. So like here for RAM, you can see how much is active, how much is used, how much is free, and so on, the same way with swap. And then down here at the bottom, you've got some other information that would also be useful for you that's kind of some uh, at the moment information. As you look through this, you've got some tabs. So we've got these activities tabs and you can kind of see what's going on. And when you click on one of those, like I did, you, you get this little pop-up that tells you more about that. So you can see what this actually is and what it's got running. So it'll give you the name. And in this case, it's a, uh, it's K-Worker. It's probably a printer. It says something about cups here, I think. So um, yeah, I mean, it's got a few different things. Let's find one that we might know what it's doing. So we've got this CPU stuff going on here. You can see all of the details. And again, you can kill the process from here. So you can terminate the process. I'm not sure about the difference between kill and terminate, um, but, but those both mean basically stop the process. I think kill means like just boom, it's done. And terminate means like, hey, as soon as you get a chance, like stop this process for me. More stop it in a nice way. Um, you can suspend the process, so you're not really stopping it, you're just kind of pausing what it's doing, and then you can resume the process as well. So you've got a lot of different controls here under this kind of pop-up, which is really nice. Makes it, makes it pretty easy to use. And again, you've got kind of that summary information here at the bottom that just stays. As we move forward, you can see the performance metrics, and you can see that they update in real time, and you can kind of see, you can get a lot of detail out of this. It's not kind of, there's, there's a lot of detail out of this that you can get. Um, and as I scroll, you can see here, so it says what it's looking at. It's got uh, one and two. I can scroll, now I'm on two and three, so this is my CPUs, and then here I'm on three and four, and then of course if I scroll again, it goes away because I only have four CPU cores. Um, over here you've got the CPU information, so the type of CPU and that kind of information, so pretty pretty useful, pretty handy. A lot of times these kind of things are useful because you'll go to a GitHub project to say, hey, I've got an issue, and they'll ask you, like what CPU type are you using? What GPU type are you using? What RAM are you using? What type of machine are you using? So you can get that stuff out of a tool like this, which is really nice. So the next thing is connections, which is talking about network connections. So over here you can see your different network connections and you can kind of see what's going on with them as far as the, the load that they have on them. And then over here you can get some more details about those things. So we've got the loopback option, we've got our uh, ENP option here, uh, we've got our tail scale option. And so you can see all the things that are, that are connected up and you can see what kind of traffic's running through them. Now we've got our disk information. You can see our different partitions, how big they are, things like that for our different disks. Here you've got just your basic kind of, here's what the system is that you're running. It's Fedora Linux version 39. You can see that it's called Brian UB Studio. It's got a Mac address. And then down here you can see some different information about the Observeware software itself. And then if you come here, you've got the Observeware version, a little bit of information about the copyright, which is open source, and, and all the information you want to see about that. So this is Observeware. It's very simple, very clean, very nice, and it's pretty low resource from what I can tell. So really, really a cool option. Again, if you're looking to install this, it, it just uses pip and Python to get it up and running. Uh, pretty, pretty great little system. I've really kind of enjoyed using it, and I'm super glad that I found it. And I wanted to share it with you guys, so I hope you like this one quite a bit. Now this one's gonna look a little more like Stacer in my opinion, but you kind of see what we're getting out of the box here. So we've got the applications, and if you click on these applications, you can see that you get some options here at the bottom of the screen based on what application you choose. So for instance, here we've got a Software Center, and right here we can click on End the Application, which means like shut it down. You can kill the application, halt the application, and of course continue using the application. Over here, you've got little information that you can get about it. So you can find out like what type of information is available on the system about that particular application. And of course here, you can search for applications as well. So really handy. I like this quite a bit. You can see what's running, what do I need to shut down, what's going on, what's using up my system processes. It's kind of like a top view, but a nice clean top view. So here you can sort and you can sort by CPU usage or sort it in reverse to see what's using the most, which is OBS right now for recording, obviously. So that's why we see that. But then you see Gnome Shell. Resources is the next one down, but it's pretty low compared to anything else as well. So nothing to really worry about there. As we continue down, we've got our list of processes that are not application specific, but just processes that are running. And again, you can sort by these columns, but once you click on the process, again, you've got options down here. So you can end the process, kill the process, halt the process, or continue the process. So if you halt it, then you can continue it. It's just like stopping and starting it. Pretty pretty great. Uh, yeah, and you can see I've got quite a few different uh, things going on here because I've got different tabs open in Firefox. 
If we look at our processor, it gives us some nice information here about how our processor is running. So it gives us a graphical interface uh, to see that. And then it also lets us see that it's at 41 degrees Celsius and a little bit more information, how many logical cores I have. And if I don't want to see this as a kind of a sum, you know, an overall average, I can just tick this box and look at that. I get all four different CPU cores and the information for those things. So I can see how much percentage they're using uh, and what, this, what the number of that CPU core is. And then when I'm done, I can turn that back off or I can just leave it on. It's kind of up to me how I do that. As we come down on RAM, same thing. So you can see your, your memory and you can see I'm using about four and a half gigs out of 65 gigs right now. So I've got a huge amount of headspace for RAM that I could use in the system and actually keep everything up and running pretty smoothly. My GPU information, so again, what my GPU is doing, how much is being used. And again, this is the recording software for the screen. So that's why you see some usage going on there, but, but pretty great. And then, uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of nice little detailed information down here as well. Temperatures, who makes it, that kind of stuff. Here I can see my 500 gig drive data and I can see what the IO is for it. So again, as I'm recording, you're gonna see some in out on it there. And then I've got this other drive that really doesn't get used because it's a separate boot drive that I use for a gaming system, which is pretty great. And then on my ethernet connection, you can see what my network connections look like, what's going on when I connect to the network. And then of course, um, I do have a, a network interface stuff for loopback and stuff like that. But Ethernet's the one that I'm really uh, wanting to watch and pay attention to. So this is a really another nice, easy, great system observation tool that I really like. And again, it's available on Flathub. You can install it on any Linux distribution out there that can use flat packs, which is really awesome and makes it really great. So I love things that are made into flat packs. It makes it super easy to get these things installed and set up and ready to go. So once you get ready, uh, once you're done with that, you've also got some settings. So you can go in here and click on your preferences. You've got some keyboard shortcuts you can set up and then you've got some uh, the, the about information. If we do keyboard shortcuts, you can see what the different shortcuts are so you can jump around in the, in the UI a little bit easier. And then also if we go look at our preferences, we've got a few preferences here. So you can set up your data unit prefix. It's got it just set to default, but you can set it to binary if you want. Show the network speed in bits per second instead of bytes per second. I actually prefer bits uh, bytes per second, so I'm gonna leave that off. Temperature units are in Celsius. I'm used to seeing like CPU temperatures and stuff like that in Celsius, so that's fine, but I'm, I'm a US person, so we usually use Fahrenheit for most things, but in this case, it makes sense to leave it as Celsius. You can change the refresh speed. Currently sets normal. You can go very slow, slow, normal, fast, very fast. It's not really like a seconds type thing. It's just uh, different options. You can show the graph grids. So if I turn that on, you see the grids popped on back here in the background. And if I turn it back off, you see they go away. So it's kind of up to you if you want to see that or not. How many graph data points do you want to see? And currently it's at 60. You could set this to 120 and it looks like it's updating about once a second. So you're going to get about a minute's worth of history on this thing. If you want more, you could set this higher. Um, so we could go and just start clicking and you see the graph start adjusting. So I'm, I'm just increasing this to two minutes here. Let's just put it at 120. There we go. And if we go and look in the background here, I'll close this real quick. You can see now I've got a lot more history going on for what it's showing me and I can see what's happening for a little bit longer. Um, I wouldn't suggest going too high because again, it's not really intended to be that kind of a tool in my opinion, but you definitely have those options. So you can say show search fields on launch. You could turn that on if you want to. And then of course, show usage data in the sidebar. So I, I kind of like this feature, so I'm gonna turn it on. Watch the sidebar over here when I do this. And you see now you get your usage data here. So it gives you a nice quick summary that you can just view real quick without having to click on every tab. And you can kind of look at the ones you want to if you need to and, and move forward. So that's kind of your general. Then you've got some different stuff here for um, appearance. So memory, processor, um, drive read, if you want to put that, you can turn it on. Uh, drive read total, drive write, drive write total. GPU is on. Uh, video memory if you want to see that information video encoder and video decoder all these things are, are available and on or off if you want them under the processes you can also choose what you see so right now it's kind of limited to these first four so you've got process id user memory and the processor that it's on but you can also see how much drive read drive read total so you can see all this information again if you want to see that and then under devices, it says show virtual devices. And then it also says show virtual network interfaces. So if I tap this one to on, 
it should show us some virtual network interfaces as well if I had any I don't, I don't think I have any on this machine right now so it's not showing me anything uh, in the same way with uh, this one so it did actually add a device here so we've got this nine gigabyte um, space that it's got set aside so you can see that as well so it's up to you if you turn those on or off but really cool I really like the resources application it's got a lot of nice settings it gives you a lot of really great information and it's a nice graphical user interface um, you can still do this with things like top so if you just do top you're gonna get some pretty great information here but it's pretty cluttered in my opinion again just not the not the best experience but it's got some great useful information if you if you know how to navigate it and use it um, and there's a lot of other ones too you can get B top H top R top I mean there's just tons of them out there but really and truly I think resources and Observeware are just absolutely terrific applications they are open source they are just really really great and they're easy to get installed so definitely get out there and check them out if you like these applications if you appreciate what these developers are doing please do me a favor, let them know that. Go into their GitHub and, and create an issue that just says, I just wanted to say thank you. That's all you have to do. If you want to and you want to say, man, I really appreciate this, look at ways that you can donate to them or the project and, and donate a little bit of money because that just encourages them to keep these things going. And I think that's such an important thing that we need to do as users of open source for the people who are so kind and so gracious as to build open source projects and products. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time. It's your Open Source Advocate, and I'm back, and I've set up a store with a little bit of merchandise. I love being your Open Source Advocate, but I want you guys to be the Open Source Advocates with me. So if you want to, get out there and get some of this stuff. And if you do, let me know what you think of it. Thank you for subscribing.